Hello, this is Marvin Glotfelty with another NGWA Industry Connected video. Today I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite topics, uh, life cycle economic analyses. Now I, I did this topic uh, when I was a McElhaney lecturer back in 2012. And so the question being addressed is, is this applicable today? How do we do it? You know, how, how, how do you actually apply this to day to day issues that one uh, impacts? Well, first, let me just, you know, uh, clarify what that analysis was about. We have costs when we construct a well. So we got the casing cost, we got the labor cost, fuel, so on. We've got filter pack costs, cement costs, and all these things, material costs, labor, um, and then the expendables like drill bits and fuel. So, so that's the cost to put a well on the ground. But then there's other costs that go over the life of the well. That's what we're talking about the life cycle cost that we're going to look at. So we have a well and we're going to operate it with pumps. The pumps have to be replaced periodically, pumps and motors. Um, the water quality, does it need well treatment? If we have water that's, let's say, high in nitrate, that might need treatment and that can be very costly. If, if it doesn't uh, need treatment, it still might uh, have scale accumulation in the well that needs to be cleaned off periodically. So this is, and there's energy costs just to pump that water out. All those things can add up and they're not going to be a one time and out. They're going to be over, you know, a typical well in my area is between 25 and 100 years is how long that well will last. So over that whole period would be the life cycle that we want to look at. So when I did the McElhaney lecture, first of all, we looked back at time. We looked at what the cost of a well was. And so we had actual low bid numbers for about 70 wells over about a 20 or so year period. And we looked at how the cost fluctuated and that, was, that gave us a nice look back in time. Then we looked forward in time and to look forward in time. We just used today's cost today being 2011 at that time, you know, because this was a 2012 lecture. So we had 2011 data. And we looked at actual low bid costs for three different kinds of wells, and this was focused on just one thing. And of course, if you did this work or a question you're asking yourself, then you can do it on a different thing. But at the time I looked at well screens. I looked at three different kinds of steel low carbon steel, high strength, low alloy, and stainless steel. So let's say, for example, you might choose that you're going to look at different kinds of cement or different kinds of drilling operations or whatever. You pick that thing and then you hold it up, you know, apples to apples as close as you can get. And then say, OK, here's the cost today to construct it. And that's a number. You've got those today. So when I did that for the well screen, stainless steel was about um, 200, if memory serves, about 265,000 bucks more. This is a 16 inch, 1200 foot well, so a, a big production well, not a household well. So quarter million dollars more for the stainless steel. Are you going to get that back or not? Well, I did the math and I looked at the operational cost, the energy cost, how often it would be cleaned and so on and so forth. I, did, I took it out 75 years. After 75 years, that saving, that, that, that extra cost of, of a quarter million dollars was paid back and, and many times over. The actual savings of the stainless steel, including the well construction cost, at the end of the day, at the end of 75 years, was $3.3 million. Bunch of money. And that, in, even for an industry or municipality, that's enough for them to take notice. 3.3 million bucks. Now, you're not going to get it today. It's going to be, you know, and, and of course, I had a wise hydrogeologist, Herman Bauer, once tell me that it's not um, not in my backyard anymore. It's not in my term of office. And so that's the way, unfortunately, management makes decisions. They're like, oh, well, I'll be out of office. I'll be retired. I don't care. So that's you, when you're interacting with clients, you may find that, you know, after they're gone, they don't care. But if you want a good well, and many folks do, even homeowners, they want a well that's going to last and that they it's going to be efficient for them. Now, the answer that I got was for the city of Phoenix for this area for this particular application. That's not going to be the answer for even, say, Tucson or Santa Fe or Los Angeles or, you know, Joe Blow's household well in, you know, northern Minnesota. 
it's very different. So what your what your the question you'll ask with your economic analysis is specific to a situation. So you can't try to take an answer over here and apply it elsewhere. It's got to be to the situation, and it's got to be focused on what you're trying to compare. Yet, you know all the what the costs are while you're operating a well. You know what the costs are when you build a well. So you can do this math, and you can just take it out over a life cycle, and it can be applied to just about any aspect of our work. And when you do that, then now you have a defendable answer for saying to your client, you know, we want to do this. It's going to cost a little bit more today, and here's how it's going to pay you back many times over. So that's uh, that's the way life cycle economic analyses work. Uh, you stick with current day dollars. You don't. If, if you can do all the fancy economic stuff and amortize into the future and all that, I don't understand that stuff. So I just didn't do it. And I've learned subsequently from economists that actually keeping it current day dollars is the way to do it anyway. So good, you know, so now dollars usually just go up, but let's just talk about today's dollars, even if it's 75 years in the future. So that is how we can apply life cycle economic analyses to what we do in the drilling industry and in the groundwater industry if we're just equipping or modifying a well. So thank you very much. Stay safe out there and I will talk to you next time.